What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoon and today we're going to talk about sketching. What you should get, what to sketch, and how to sketch, and a whole lot more. So many people wonder how I come up with my illustrations. Well, there is a process that I do go through in terms of brainstorming different things, trying out new ideas, and putting it all together in one illustration. That's basically my sketching process in three different steps. So let's get to the video so I can show you guys that there's more to sketching than meets the eye. Tip number one are your materials. What materials should you get for sketching? Well, right off the bat, you should get a sketchbook, but I like to get a sketchbook with like a hardbound cover in case I wanna, you know, like if I'm on the go, then I can like pull out a sheet of paper and kind of like draw literally on it because it kind of acts like a clipboard where you can like draw on it and you don't have to worry about it being flimsy or whatever so that's why i like these hardbound sketchbooks i honestly don't have a preference towards uh sketchbooks if i have a cheap sketchbook and it does what i need to do then i'm totally satisfied i'm not going to complain but i also like using uh canton mixed media paper this paper is actually good for using markers as well but i normally use it for sketching because it's got a really nice tooth to it and it's got like a nice amount of texture so i can draw on it no problem but yeah if i do if i do end up getting a cheap sketchbook then i will be completely satisfied but i do also like canton mixed media paper either one would work for me it doesn't really matter so if you're going to the store and you're uh, looking to pick up a set of sketching pencils you might come across something like this i'm okay with using a set of pencils like these but to my preference, I only use two pencils out of this set. To any artist watching this video and you know you're sketching pencils right off the bat, the pencils that I normally use are a 4H and a 2B. The 4H I like to use because it's a, a light lead and it's easy to erase. 5H could also work and 6H as well. I also like to use a 2B. 2B actually has a dark lead and when I'm sketching I don't like to go any darker than like a 2B because if you're one of those artists who actually finalize their sketches, and they want to go back and erase it then 2b won't be too dark to erase or whatever if if you know what i'm saying so yeah and i i would recommend this to uh sketching artists who are like familiar with realism which i'm not realism something like this is something i'm not into so that's why i don't like using a lot of these pencils just like a couple of them will work for me and that's about it but to my preference i won't need to use like a darker lead in the long run and i don't but yeah another supply i like to use are the prismacolor cali race pencils if you've heard of the crayola erasable colored pencils then these pencils work just like these I honestly don't know the difference between the two, but it's an alternative. But I do tend to use these in my sketchbooks all the time if I'm trying to finalize my artwork. I'll show you guys how to finalize your sketches later on in the video, but I do tend to use these when I'm sketching as well as using them for final artwork. These pencils here are like a 4H pencil, but if you press lightly enough on it, you can also erase it. But I do tend to use these because they're kind of like colorful and sometimes it's kind of fun to break away from like the black and white sketching and try to use uh, a little bit more color in your sketches. So that's why I like to use these. Another sketchbook I like to use is called the Tone Tan Sketchbook. It works just like sketch paper and mixed media paper, except it's a little bit more smooth than regular sketch paper. So you can also apply markers to it, but since it's a tone tan sketchbook, it's not going to be as white as normal sketchbooks would. It's going to have sort of a tone to it, which you can apply light and dark media to it. So unlike normal sketchbooks where it's just white, you can also apply a white colored pencil to this paper and it'll actually show up, which is pretty neat in my opinion. So here's a drawing I made with uh, both markers and I applied a white gel pen to it. The way you see the white gel pen in this drawing is the same way the white colored pencil works because the color of the paper isn't too dark and it's not too light. So that's what's really interesting about uh, this tone tan sketchbook. And sketchbooks like these also come in grays and I think blue as well. Here's another drawing I made on toned gray paper where I applied the colored pencil marker and I added a little bit of color to it just to you know add like a little bit of a focal point to the drawing even though it is a sketch. Here are some of the supplies that I use the most. I kind of use a big king size sharpie it's got a big chisel tip to it so I like to use this for like filling in really dark and black areas and if I need to go even smaller I can use uh, my fine point sharpie which is used for like smaller areas. So right here I have a gray marker. I like to use gray markers for sketching, especially if it's in like a tone tan paper because markers aren't really good for normal sketching paper. So whenever I'm making a sketch on like either mixed media paper or my tone tan sketchbook, I like to use this marker to kind of make, uh, you know, like a little bit of shading in there 
Also, if I'm going to make final artwork, it kind of tells my future self what kind of color to use. Since this gray is kind of like a mid-tone gray, I'll tell my future self this color I want in such area will have a light value. So in this case, if this is a light gray, I'll include like a light purple or a light yellow or a light red in the final drawing. So right here I have some pencils. I have both a white and a black Prismacolor pencil. Earlier I mentioned about the mid-tone sketchbook having sort of like a mid-tone color to the paper so you can apply both light and dark media to it. And earlier I mentioned with my sketching pencils I have a 4H which I use for final artwork. It's got a very light lead and it's easy to erase so that's why I like using this one. So normal sketching pencils won't have an eraser at the end. That's why I stuck this one to the end of it. This is actually a kneaded eraser. I don't really like traditional erasers because if you erase on them, they leave shavings everywhere and it makes my desk a mess. So that's why I don't like using them anymore. So I gravitated towards a kneaded eraser. This is something you can get at art stores. It kind of looks like a stick of gum. But let me tell you this. I accidentally lost one of my kneaded erasers once and I found it on the bottom of my shoe thinking it was gum. So it's really awesome to have these things around um, because they don't leave around shavings like traditional erasers do. But eventually if you use it enough it'll get really dark like this one over here. I, I use this one quite a few times and it's gotten really dark. I've erased a whole lot of lead with it. And this one I just got a couple months ago. So it's a great idea to uh, include like a chunk of your kneaded eraser just to put on the end of your pencil. Just in case you want to erase a small area, you can just go on with your pencil and just erase it. So you want to go back and grab an eraser from way over here and, you know, like get a small area and then do all that. Like in a way, it kind of takes time away from whatever you're sketching. Tip number two is drawing basic shapes. You can low key create anything using just basic shapes. Here's a few sketches I made off camera where I created almost anything here using basic shapes. I created this book with just a rectangular prism, this honey pot with like a cylinder, this doghouse with like a with like a cube or like a rectangular prism as well, and then this King's Dominion cup made from a cylinder. So if you understand all the basic shapes and 3D shapes, you can create almost anything. Tip number three is actually a question. You don't know what to draw? Here's something. Try drawing something you don't know how to draw. I know how to draw hands now, but this was about three years ago when I didn't know how to draw hands and I was just learning. So not every hand on this page is perfect, I get that. But you can also try a bunch of different movements. If you have an idea of what a hand movement here looks like in this case, then you can try to draw it, you know, draw whatever you see in your head. It may not always be perfect, but if you draw it in your sketchbook, you can actually learn from it. Like say if you go onto the next page and it's completely blank, you can learn from this page and kind of improve it. You can make it better in a way, you can change a few things about it. You know, all that stuff you can do if you got another blank page, but this one is already filled. And this goes for anything, whether it's hands or not. If you don't know how to draw like horses or animals or anything else like that, you don't know how to draw any of that, picture it in your head or even look at reference photos and draw whatever you see. It's not always gonna end up being perfect, but like I said, you can also learn from it. And that ties into tip number four, which is you can get messy, do whatever you want in a sketchbook. What I mean by get messy is, if you're drawing whatever is in your head, you can just keep making scribbles or whatever, do whatever you want, because a sketchbook isn't always gonna be perfect. You can't expect perfectionism in a sketchbook, because a sketchbook is like a place where you can like plan your ideas, brainstorm different things, and try out different things. It's like a warehouse you can keep all your uh, different ideas and also your past mistakes in here. That way, when you look back on it, you can improve. You can either improve or make it better just by looking at your past, you know, messiness that you did in your sketchbook. And that's okay. You can get mess. You can get as messy as you want in your sketchbook. It won't matter. Here are also some thumbnails I did for an illustration I did a couple years ago. So this is what I did. I made two thumbnails here. One thumbnail is one way and the other is kind of reflected. And I didn't show in my sketchbook what I decided on. I just went and just created the illustration for I don't know what reason, honestly. But if you look down here, I I kind of drew a sketch of like a blue sky and I and I told myself and I told myself I wanted it as the background and that's okay. So I told my future self, or actually my past self rather. So I told my past self, so I told my future self or past self rather that I want a blue sky. And I drew some clouds in here just to help convey that it's a sky as well. And then I also drew a line here that's kind of like the horizon line of the drawing. And I wrote C, so that's gonna be at the C because this right here is actually a pirate ship 
And a pirate ship can be almost anywhere. It could be beached in the sand. It doesn't even have to be out at sea, but that's besides the point. And this kind of ties into what I said earlier about being messy and trying out different things. Drawing thumbnails like these to plan out in illustration is kind of like the way a sketchbook should be, but with art, there aren't any rules. So I can't guarantee that my future self or any other artist watching this video will actually make thumbnails for an illustration in every page of the sketchbook. So here's one page. The next page is actually an illustration. So it kind of proves the point that I just made. My fifth and final tip relates to finalizing your sketches. What does that mean? Well, if you're getting messy all over your sketchbook and you finally find something that you really like, you can, al you can always finalize your sketches. And there is a whole bunch of ways you can do that and I'll explain later. There are a couple of ways you can do that and I'll explain in a minute. But let's say this page is full of like hand gestures and whatever. If I'm satisfied with just one of these hand gestures, I can go in with like a brush pen that I use for my sketchbooks and I can just like outline it or whatever. But if you want to go even further, you can like either color it in or shade it in or go with like a red and sort of circle it and say, hey, I like this one. So going back to these thumbnails that I mentioned before, if I want to, I can go ahead and circle the one that I want in red, say, hey, I want this then I can do that. But if you're going in to make a few character designs on the page, here's a few ways you can finalize that. So one way I like doing it is to outline the character with a brush pen and then adding a simple shape like a triangle or a square to the background and coloring that in with a Prismacolor color erase pencil. Another way is you can go in with a graphite pencil and I'm using a 2B lead to kind of finalize it because it has a dark lead. You can go in with your Prismacolor color erase pencil and color in the necessary parts. And with your 2B pencil, you can add any additional shading to it. Another way to do it is to outline everything with your brush pen. And instead of using the Prismacolor color erase pencils to color in any necessary part, you can go in with a gray marker and then if you want you can go in with your Prismacolor color erase pencil and color in any other necessary parts. So those are my top tips about sketching. Sketching is an important part of my illustration process and it's something I don't often talk about on my channel. Always remember a sketchbook is not always going to be perfect because a sketchbook is mainly used for exploring different ideas and everything and just straight up brainstorming. You never know what idea you'll ever get just by sketching in a sketchbook. If you are interested in seeing what I have in my sketchbooks, I have a whole playlist full of sketchbook tours that you guys can check out. See what I have in my sketchbooks, see what I draw in my spare time and all that stuff. Here's the whole playlist right here if you wanna go and check that out. If you like this video and you found it useful, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I